Manhattan. Rick Leventhal was uh, in downtown Manhattan when the buildings came down and has an updated uh, update for us uh, from Lower Manhattan. Rick? Well, John, uh, we're, we're on Church Street at Reed Street, for those of you who are familiar with Lower Manhattan, just a few blocks away from World Trade. Still thick black smoke billowing from the scene where both towers collapsed. Again, just a few blocks away from us. We were standing out here on Church Street when both towers came tumbling down. And each time there was a huge cloud of smoke and debris that came roaring down this street, and everyone literally ran for their lives. At this point, the police have uh, been efforting to establish a perimeter. They're trying to keep people back and make sure that no one gets uh, interferes with their job, which is to try and uh, secure the area and then get inside that World Trade Center rubble to see whether or not they can locate any survivors who may have been inside the building or just outside the building when it came tumbling down. Uh, we want to bring in Mark Walsh, who's a, a freelancer for Fox. You live just a few blocks away and witnessed. Dude, I was I was I live on the 43rd floor of a building, which is five blocks from the World Trade Center itself. I witnessed the entire thing from beginning to end. People talk about how it looked like a movie. I know when I came walking down here early this morning and saw both towers on fire and people on every street corner, it was it was it was like a movie. But you watched the planes hit the towers. I was watching with my roommate. It was approximately several minutes after the first plane had hit. I saw this plane come out of nowhere and just ream right into the side of the twin tower, exploding through the other side. And then I witnessed both towers collapse, one first and then the second, mostly due to structural failure because the fire was just too intense. Uh, obviously, there were, there were a lot of people inside the buildings at the time. Two guys um, from the 7th Precinct, uh, the 1st Precinct, the fire department right here, the 7th truck, they, those guys were all right there at, at ground zero when those things went down. And God bless. I know there's a lot of guys there that were around there, and hopefully they made it out. What was happening around you and the streets around you as this was all going down? Absolute pandemonium. From my viewpoint, up 43 floors, I could see people running like ants, just absolutely scurrying for their lives. Billows of smoke coming through the streets, just walking down the street, just pushing everybody back. And then several minutes after, it looked like it had just snowed over the entire area. Yeah, the, the, the debris, the soot was thick on the street. You, there's still a, a dusting of it out here. Uh, but but when, I, when I was standing here and, and the towers collapsed, we, we saw police officers running for their lives, screaming, get back, get back, get back. And I'll tell you, that's a wake-up call when you see cops running for their lives. And people, too, women's pushing baby carriages, that sort of thing. Well, you had the first tower first. That one, when that first went down, it just pushed everybody back. And it was a good 15 minutes before the second tower finally right. collapsed. Yeah. And it was just overwhelming. And by that point, it was just insane. Well. Uh, I'm hearing a lot of similar stories from people who were inside the building. One gentleman we spoke to earlier today, John, uh, was on the 77th floor and said it was a relatively orderly evacuation at that point after the first plane hit the first tower. Everyone going down the stairs, not a lot of panic. But when they got to the sixth floor, he says they felt a second shake. And then, then people started to really be concerned. Uh, obviously, there were uh, people uh, in the building at the time of this, and, and uh, some of those people. Uh, they haven't recovered them yet, and, and that's a, a big issue right now, is trying to get the, the rescue workers and, and the emergency crews to the building. There were police officers there and emergency crews there uh, when this was all happening, and, and they were right at ground zero when it all went down. Can, so can we talk to you? What's your role out here right now? Uh, just standing by right now. Can't say what role I'm playing right now. Well, uh, w uh, there's a lot of standing by. There's also concern that some of these other buildings might actually come down. This building right here with the glass uh, that you see, this, the nearest tall building, uh, that has structural damage as well. Uh, we saw a lot of glass broken out, and a corner of the building appeared to be uh, in distress. And there's concern that there might actually be another collapse uh, of that building. And I can also tell you that when we, were, when we first got here, we were a few blocks up. We could actually see debris from one of the planes on the street, a huge gear at one point, uh, looked like a piece of an engine at another point. So that debris is still littering that area up there. They had roped it off with police tape, and they had FBI agents out there, and that was just before the first tower came tumbling down, and everyone went running away. So there's evidence out here. There's a lot of work left to be done. And uh, as you can imagine, the streets are, are a bit chaotic at this point. But I just want to show you one, one drastic uh, 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 difference looking north as opposed to looking south. Blue skies, uh, clear streets, not, about, not a lot going on over there. But then come back around this way, Dan, and uh, you'll see just uh, smoke billowing from the scene. Uh, still, obviously, a, a major disaster waiting to be cleaned up. Back to you, John. All right, Rick Leventhal in Lower Manhattan, thank you very much. A, a dark day in America, September 11th, 2001.